Hi, I'm Andreas and I will present our work Understanding Object Dynamics for Interactive Image to Video Synthesis. This is joint work with Timo Milbich, Michael Dopenwald and Björn Ormer from Heidelberg University. So far, video prediction models synthesize future videos given one or more past frames and either focus on predicting the most likely continuation or on generating arbitrary, diverse but plausible motion. So what they lack is means to precisely control the motion of the depicted objects. And that's what we are interested in. Therefore, we introduce the novel problem of interactive image to video synthesis, where we consider being given a still input frame of a certain object, in this case the depicted person, and the poking of a single pixel within this object, which defines the desired end position of the poked object part. Based on these two inputs, we want to generate a video showing a plausible response of the entire object to this manipulation. So in this example, we want the person to raise his right arm up to the defined endpoint. A model trained to achieve this novel task has to infer the object motion of the remaining parts, which aren't directly manipulated. Thus, it needs to capture the interrelations between all individual object parts. Having learned such a model enables human users to interact with still images only by poking a certain pixel. Moreover, we don't want to do this only for humans, but for arbitrary rigid objects. And we want to learn our model in a self-supervised fashion, only from videos. Thus, we don't want to make assumptions on object shape and don't assume ground truth concerning the pokes to be available for training the model. This means that we need to generate train time interactions from what we're given, only unlabeled videos. And here's how we achieve this. We first use a pre-trained optical flow estimator to obtain the optical flow maps between the start and end frame of all our considered training videos. Based on these maps and assuming the object to be the primary source of motion in the video, we can randomly sample a pixel from those obtaining sufficiently large flow magnitudes. And simply use the flow vector at this location to be our train time interaction. For this, we're all set for training the model. And here's how we do it. To obtain a fixed object state space, we pre-train a unit autoencoder to reconstruct static image frames, resulting in a state corresponding to a hierarchy of representations, one for each individual spatial level. Hereafter, we'll learn a dedicated dynamics model F, which gets as input the initial object state, sigma zero, corresponding to the initial frame of a training video, and an encoding of the interaction estimated between the start and end frames of this video. Based on these two inputs, we train the model to reconstruct the video sequence. Hence, the dynamics model needs to predict all object states succeeding sigma zero, and the pre-trained image decoder maps each state back to the image domain. As we learn our model, in the fixed state space we can add a trajectory loss between the predicted and ground truth trajectories of object states to help the model to predict the plausible motion for the non-poked object parts. Let's take a closer look at F, which we choose to be a hierarchical RNN, consisting of n individual RNNs operating at the different spatial levels of sigma. Each RNN predicts its next state based on the current state and the upsampled prediction of the RNN at the spatial level below. With this architecture, we can model fine-grained object dynamics. Finally, we add a static and a temporal discriminator during training. So let's look at some results for interactive image-to-video synthesis. We evaluate our model on the object categories of humans and plants. We present the newly recorded poking plants dataset, which contains pot plants of various drastically different shapes and textures, and evaluate our model on this dataset. These two examples demonstrate the capabilities of our model. In the first column of each example, we see the ground truth video starting with a frame which our model animates by using the pokes depicted by the red arrows. The second column shows the prediction of a model on pokes obtained from optical flow. The last three columns show the results arising from pokes of human users. Next, we evaluate our model on human motion. Here we consider the iPerf dataset, which shows diverse full body human motion. As our model has learned to capture the interrelation between human body parts, it can also predict human motion in a controlled way, based on still images and pokes. Moreover, as our model understands the object structure, we can use it to identify and visualize unique object parts by performing 100 random interactions at the same location indicated with the white cross, we obtain motion correlations for the poked pixel, which we visualize as heat maps in this plot. Our paper contains plenty of other visualizations of further human motion datasets and also an extensive quantitative analysis, showing the strong performance of our model 
Moreover, we show additional experiments, including its generalization to images obtained from web search. All this can be found on the paper and on our project page. We introduced the novel problem of interactive image to video synthesis and presented the model to enable human users to interact with still images. Thanks for your interest.